Welcome everyone to today's webinar. So we're going to look at Learn with Nala, which is the new version of Write On. So there may be uh, people here today who were familiar with Write On, which was our old e-learning platform that closed down about a year ago. So it was around January, February. Um, and we launched a new platform, which we're very excited about because there's lots of new things that we're able to do now with it. And what I'm going to step through today is really just to get you started with the platform. So we'll look at the learner perspective, which will be creating a learner account and registering for a course and how you would indeed register for multiple courses. And then we'll look at the tutor view. So um, if you haven't been set up with a tutor account, or you're not set up as a centre, I'll show you at the end today how we can kick off that uh, process so that you can become a registered tutor and then we would give you an account where you'd be able to view learner progress. So to get started, the first things that you need to do to help your learners get set up is to one, create an account for the learner and there's a special link that we'll provide you. So when you're set up as a center using the platform, we will create a special link for you, which would look something like this. It's quite a long link. There are URL shorteners that you can use to, to shorten it if you want, like if you're emailing it to your learners, or you might be setting up this for your learners in advance and then you can just give them their username and password. And I'll explain all that um, now. But it's important to use this link, okay? Not to be setting up learners as independent learners so that you can monitor their progress as a tutor. And once the account is created, then you can register for courses um, for the learner. So you can register for level two and level three courses. And indeed, we now have some level one courses available as well at QQI level one. And just a final note before I go into the demo piece, note that all learners, even right on learners. So if you are previously using our old platform, all learners have to go through this process. We didn't carry over any accounts or any learner details or any work from the old platform. So this has to be done for all learners and all centers. And the other thing to note is if your learner has already set up maybe um, an account for themselves as an independent learner, and now you're creating an account for them under your center, we can't merge the work. OK, and that would have been the same on right on as well. So just to note that. So let me show you um, the demo. So you will be given when you're set up as a center, a special link. OK, and it looks something like this. As I say, it's quite a long link and there'll be a code in at the end of it. OK, that code represents your center. So when I scroll down this page, the only center that's mentioned here is this Involve account, which is our, our test account at the moment. Um, if you are an ETB, you will have one type of code. If you're a non-ETB, you'll have another type of code. That's all set up in our registration process. OK, so if you're not a center at the moment um, and you're interested in becoming a center, let me just show you what you would click on. You can go to courses.nala.ie. OK, you don't need to type in all of this. Just courses.nala.ie and click on Become a Centre. OK, and there is the information there that you fill out. And that will kick off a process whereby we'll send you out a form. Whoever is the responsible person in your centre, be it um, a centre head or a principal in a school would be the one that would have to fill out the form, give the names of the tutors who might use it, and then we will set that up for you. Um, it also requires membership of NALA as a small organisation or a large organisation, depending on your size. And then we would let you know about training that's available like this free webinar today. OK, so assuming that that process has been done, then we would email you a link. So we would set you up as a tutor and we would give you the link that you would use 
for your learners. And that would require filling out a form like this. Okay, so it's quite similar to write on that you have to provide details like your email, first name, last name, address, PPSN, phone number, that kind of detail, um, and a username and a password. Okay, so unlike the old platform, right on, you can generate your own password here. And if you forget it, there's a link that you can go to to get um, a new password created again as well. So um, I'll show you that link very shortly. So you go to the long URL, you fill out a page like this for your learner. Note that they have to have an email. And then the only option here is this center. So unlike right on, there used to be a drop down list of about 190 centers and learners would have had to have picked out the center that they were in. And, and sometimes there was mistakes made. It was quite easy with a long list. So now we have a cleanly your code, your center and only your center. Then the learner needs to um, tick that they've accepted the terms of service um, and a privacy policy. If you click on these links, there is a video here that explains this wording below. Okay, so everything that's appeared on the page for the privacy statement, including information that we need to share. So if you're not an ETB centre, um, we have a requirement from Solus, just like other ETB centres, to put learner details into a system called uh, Program and Learner Support Services, PLSS. Okay, so there is information that's sought for the learner um, and that's explained in the form when you are registering. And if you have any questions, come back to us on that. Okay, so it means that when the learner is, is ticking these boxes, they can click on these links and watch a video that explains this. Okay, and then create account. So I've done the first step. I've filled out the form and created an account for this learner that's called Involved Test Learner 2202. And I'm going to save my password and username there. The second step is to register for courses. Now you're automatically brought to this page where all the courses are. It's also available under Start Now here. And there are courses listed by level. So level one, two and level three. We offer certification from QQI at level three and two. At the moment, the content that's at level one doesn't offer certification, but it is mapped to the QQI outcomes. So it is something we're hoping to do in the future to be able to offer QQI um, certification at level one. And you can sign up for individual courses or you can sign up for a bundle. So for example, if I click on here, it tells me what courses are available in the level two general uh, learning cert bundle. So it's reading, writing, listening, speaking, pattern and relationship, using technology and personal decision making. And it's a similar thing for level three. There's a bundle of six courses, which means that if the learner did all six of these courses, they would get individual minor awards for each of the six, plus they'd get an overall uh, major award in general learning at level three. So you can decide with the learner what you'd like to concentrate on and sign up for. Uh, it depends obviously on what your learners are doing and so on. Sometimes I would recommend maybe particularly when starting off with the platform, just to start with maybe one course at a time. So for example, I could pick using technology at level two and click on register now. Okay, so this tells me that I have registered for that course. And if I wanted to sign up for another one, I could click back and sign up for another one like pattern and relationship. And if I wanted to sign up for more, I can simply do the back button and 
sign up for more courses or alternatively I could sign up for the bundle which would automatically sign me up for six courses. So if I choose that for say level three general learning register now it's going to sign me up for all six of those courses. So when I click on clicking here and then I log in with my new account then I'm into the, the e-learning platform where the courses are. So I always think of it that that first part which is courses.nala.ie with the big long link is kind of the outer part where you need to create accounts and register learners for courses and then this learn.nala.ie is actually where you can get at the courses and see the content. Okay so just to go back to the slides again so I mentioned that there's the two steps use the long link and register for courses okay and then what we'll see now very shortly is when I've logged in as a learner and I click on content to click into a course then I'll see a lot of blocks like this so this is what we call the lessons page if you have used write on before you might be familiar with the um, like a snakes and ladders block almost where a little icon would move up and down the blocks this is a similar idea so that all the content is listed out and the idea is that you work your way from the top to the bottom to get through um, a course the very first block that's always going to be in a level two or level three course is a block called what do i already know and this is our initial assessment and what's within that when you click on it is there'll be a number of tasks and each task will map to a learning outcome from QQI. So this is what we call our recognition of prior learning. The idea being that if somebody was to do all three of these tasks and get everything correct, an end test would appear at the end of all this blocks of content and the learner could skip over those lessons and go straight to that end test and hopefully pass it and then get their QQI award. So it's a way to let somebody who has some prior knowledge maybe skip through a course of lessons and get to that end test very quickly. Okay so to help learners through a course Learners can do those tasks in an initial assessment at level two and three. So this is our recognition of prior learning. If the learner fails or doesn't do the tasks, then the way to get through the course is to do lessons. And if the learner completes the tasks or lessons, then they will need to do the summative assessment, which is an end test. And in some courses, particularly the courses at level three, there's some portfolio work that also has to be done. So I'll demonstrate that. So I've logged in now as my learner account. I've signed up for courses. All the courses I've signed up for is here under my courses and all. If I click on level two, I'll see those two courses I've signed up for. If I click on level three, that bundle of six courses at level three is all available to me. Under Brightspace courses, we don't have anything at the moment. The name of this platform, by the way, is Brightspace. So it means that it's courses coming from the software provider. So we don't have anything there at the moment. So um, this page here is also the home page for the learner. OK, so you'll see that there is a banner. So when we set you up as a centre, we'll put your centre logo here because we recognise that these are your learners and that we want them to feel that they're part of this space. So I just have a, a test banner there at the moment and, and image. And um, they'll also see the courses that are available to them and any announcements. So, for example, we have a questions and answer session that we're going to try out this Wednesday. Uh, where learners can join in and there's a link there 
um, and if there's any other information coming out or how to get started on the platform, all of those will appear in that announcements section. So if we were to get started on a course then, you would click on the course and then there's this is the home page for the course so there's announcements about the course so for example there's a video on how you would get a QQI award what you'd have to do so I recommend watching those or you can click straight into content and then you see those blocks that I was talking about so there's what do I already know this additional information is for non-ETB learners so it's to capture information that's required by SOLAS which is required in turn by the European Social Fund and um, there's information on the announcements part of the home page so you can come back to us if you have questions about that and it's part of the centre registration process um, and then the lessons themselves are listed there note there's no end test available so you can as a learner you could start in lesson one and work your way all the way through or you could start in this block called what do i already know and you can click into that block and click on start here you'll also notice there's this button at the top of the page if you click here it'll bring you to the last place that you finished off so since this is a new uh, account and nothing has been done i can either click here or click there it'll bring me to the same place so there's some information about the uh, the block and what's expected so there's going to be three tasks and how to get started so to give you an idea of some of the content i'll show you some of the tasks so they're always very short at level two so in this case, there's three, three tasks and this one maps to the learning outcomes, as I say, from QQI. So to answer, I would click in the circle and click on continue. And then again, read the question again and then click in the circle. OK, and I get a score. So there's no option at this point only to either go back or continue on. OK, unlike what you'll see is going to happen in the lessons, because this is an assessment of sorts. So that's the first task. Then in the second task, this is a drag and drop type question. So the learner has to click on an item and drag it to where they think is right. So we'll say ATM is a bank, food mixer is in the kitchen and treadmill is in the hospital. OK, and I got that one wrong, which I didn't mean to do. So I'll show you how we can change that. OK, and then task three. Then again, I'd read the question and defrost. And find a cafe on the map. And then I could check a weather forecast, my smartphone. I get three out of three. OK, so as I say, all of those map to the QQI outcomes. So I'll just pull up here. You can Google QQI um, level three using technology. And there you see the three outcomes that this is matching to. So at this point, then I can click on next and I'm done. And it brings me back to um, the the lessons page again note that this has popped up here because learners can get a badge for questions they got right okay so this is all explained in the videos at the end of this block as well what you have to do if I just show you again there okay so if you think you got everything right there's a video there and you can make it big uh, to explain what to do or if you've got some things wrong, what you can do. Okay. So just to go to the slides here. So learners can view their own progress. Okay. And I'm going to show you in a second how learners can view their progress. And you as tutors can view progress as well. 
the important thing to remember is to get through a course, you either do that first block and answer everything correctly, in which case you can go straight to an end test, which should appear. Or in this case, like what I've done, I've got some of the tasks um, answered incorrectly. If I answered everything incorrectly, I'd have to do all the lessons before that end test would appear. And in most cases, it'll be a combination. So people might get some things right and some things wrong. Then you do the equivalent. So for example, it says if task two, if the result is go to lesson, then you need to do lesson two. And then you can get through the lesson by doing the end test plus portfolio work, and that will lead to course completion and QQI certification. So as a learner, then I can click on back to content. And my progress and grades. And what we'll see here is here's the grades for those three tasks that I've done. OK, so obviously I failed the second one and got the other two right. So in order to get through this course now, I'll have to go to lesson two and work my way through it. So I can do that by clicking on content and then clicking on lesson two. Now, depending on your learners, you may decide that you don't want to use this block at all. That's OK. Then you'd start, I would recommend it lesson one and work your way through all the lessons. Just to give you an idea of what the content looks like in the lessons, then I'd click on start here. OK, and there's a video that explains what the lesson's about. And then we see similar questions or in this case, the exact same question that appeared in that block. And this time I will get it right. And if I click on check answers, note that there's an option to try again here because it's a lesson. It's about brushing up your skills. That try again button wasn't available in the tasks because it's an assessment. OK, so I could try this again if I wanted or I can go to the next task. And again, these are similar sort of questions to what you saw in the initial assessment. So the idea is to reinforce those skills. OK, so you have this type of one. And again, I can try again or move to the next question. There's this type of question where you can type in your answer. So the learner is getting a chance to um, type. And then they can try the whole thing again or move on. OK, and what you'll notice in all the pages as well is this speaker button. When I click on that, it will read out um, the wording here. OK, so it reads it out in a kind of American accent. If for whatever reason you're getting a German accent when you are using this yourselves, and I'll show you the tutor view um, very shortly, um, make sure that you've taken updates. OK, you don't need to have the very latest device to use this. You can use it on a tablet. You can use it on a phone. It is a bit smaller, so you can it's usable, but it's it's harder, obviously. Um, and obviously on a laptop, you can use it, but make sure you're using the latest version of the browser. I'll show you where I can get links to that. So this is giving you an idea of the content um, and we've tried to update some of the content as well to make it more about renewable energy and things like that as well.
and at any time I could go back by obviously pressing the back button and step forward as well. Okay, I could decide also to skip over a question. And I'll show you how you can view that as well afterwards. So I might skip over these. Okay, so, and this all maps, as I say, to those QQI learning outcomes. And then this is a new type of question as well. So um, this one is a sequencing one, whereby you have to move things around. And when you move the thing to the right place, it will appear like a green bar like this. Okay. Um, and this is explained in those videos at the introduction of the lesson as well, that the idea is to get all green bars. So the feedback isn't always about a score as well. It, it's driven in other ways too. Okay, and then that brings you to the end of the lesson and explains how to move on. Okay, so that learner has done that lesson. They've gone through all the content or they visited all the pages and the end test should appear. What the learner can do at this point, because it does, it takes a refresh for that end test to appear, is the learner can go to my progress. The grade for that task two won't change, okay, because you can only do a task once. So what will always stay is go to lesson. But if I look under this content section now, I can see that lesson two has been done. And I can see here that the end test has been what's called conditionally released. So when I go back into content now, then the end test is there. And for this learner to get through this course, all they would have to do is click onto the end test and go through those three questions and get them right. And then we in NALA would check the work. And if everything looks to be correct, we would automatically forward them for a QQI award. So just to go back to the slides again, that's the three ways of getting through a course. So for a QQI certificate, the learner needs to successfully complete an end test and portfolio work where it's applicable. The end test will only appear upon successful completion of the tasks or lessons or a combination. So you can decide how you want to use this in your centre, if you want to use that first block or not, um, or it, you know, it's always going to depend on your learner um, if they've never maybe got a national certificate um, and they're at level three, for example, you might get them to do a level two course, just to boost their confidence and maybe get them through um, using that RPL feature. Once a task has failed, the status will always stay as go to lesson. So it can't be repeated, but questions in the end test can be done as many times as needed. And you can click on the question and retake content. Okay, and I'll show you what that looks like. So if you're to view all of this as a tutor to help your learners, because there is a lot of information there, you would log into your NALA created account. So you don't need to make one. We automatically sign you up for all the courses that are available. So you don't need to register for courses yourself. And then you would click on a course and then go to course admin, either class progress or grades. OK, so I'll show you what that uh, tutor view looks like. So if I log out here and I'm going to log in with a tutor account, okay so note as a tutor I'm going straight to learn.nala.ie and again when we set you up as a centre and then set up tutors within a centre we will email you your username and uh, a password 
you can always change that temporary password by clicking on forgot your password here and then you could either fill in your username or your email and it will send um, uh, an email to the email account that we have for you that we've used when we're setting up your account so we'd receive that from the point of contact in your center um, and you can do the same for learners as well so if you've already created your learner account and registered for courses once you go to learn.nala.ie okay then this page here um, is where you can click on that forgot your password link and you can reset passwords for your learner um, so you'd have to know the learner's email address or, or get the learner to go to their email and that's how they would set um, uh, their passwords note that on this page we also have links to the latest versions of chrome and edge if you're using um, an iPad or so than the latest version of Apple Safari. So make sure that whatever device you're working on has taken all the updates so that it's the latest version of the browser. As I say, the device can be a little older, but it needs to be the latest version of browsers for this to work. So we'll provide a link to you so that you can log in. We'll provide you with that username and a temporary password that you can change and we'll sign you up for all the courses automatically. So for example, here I can scroll across and see the level two general learning courses. Okay, so they're there. I can see the level one courses. So they're there. And then for level three, I can go to level three general learning. And we have most of the courses there apart from digital media, which is in under the information and technology one okay so as a tutor I can then click on a course so for example we had a learner who just worked through um, using technology there so I could click on level two and using technology and then go to course admin and class progress Sorry, this is a test account that I'm using, so I don't, I haven't enrolled myself into that one. So apologies, let me go to another course here for a sec, like listening and speaking. Okay, if it is a case that there's a course missing when you're working on your tutor accounts or you have any issue at all, please do let us know and we can sort that out for you. Okay, so, um, when I click here on course admin and class progress okay because this is a test account I'm working between different centers so I have it set up differently to how it'll be for yourselves so I'm just going to click into the right center and now I can see all the learners enrolled on that course in this center so for example I could click on this learner so that's a test account I could go to grades. I could look and see that this learner has done task one, task two, task three, they've failed it, which would mean to me that they need to go and do lesson three um, and task four. Okay. Now, there is a tutor guide, which I've provided as a handout today. Um, I'll also show you where you can get the latest version. But in that tutor guide, there's a list on page 13 and 14 of all the numbers of items that you should see in the initial assessment and in the end test. So for example, the likes of listening and speaking at level two, there should be five tasks, okay? So really what we should be seeing here for this learner is five tasks and yet we're only seeing grades for four. So this tells me that this learner hasn't done the fifth task. The other place that I can check progress is by going to course admin and grades. Okay, you won't need to, to do this one because again, it's the, the test account. So I'll just apply that. And if I go to this learner here again, 
here you'll see there is a task five and it says go to lesson. Now it's saying go to lesson, which makes it look like the learner has failed it, but we, we didn't actually see a grade appearing. So there's something happening with this one for that learner. So if I log out and just show you the learner's view then, So as a learner, I can click on that course, listening and speaking, and my progress, and grades, and I can see that same view that I just saw as a tutor. And when I click on content, note that the task is there, okay? There is a tick beside it, which means that the page has been visited, but because there's no grade for it, it hasn't appeared as an item um, in the grades list. It means that it hasn't been done. Okay, so as a learner, I would need to go into that task and do the task and click on retake content. The two options that appear here, review and retake. Review means that you can do the item again, but the grade is never changed. Retake means that you can do it again. And if your grade is higher than previous attempts, then that highest grade will be held and will always be held. OK, so for this learner now, I would need to do this drag and drop question. and check answers and I get a score. And what happens now, so the videos there explain if you think you got things right or something's wrong, what you can do. And then that task five disappears. Okay, so this is just a tip for yourselves that if the end test isn't appearing for a learner, make sure that they have done all the tasks. The end test still won't appear for this learner because I need to do lesson three. Okay, so again, if I check my progress now and grades, we'll see there is a result for task five, and there you can see the time at when it was done. But task three says go to lesson. And if I click on content and lesson three, nothing has been done. And I can see that same view by going to my progress and content. And again, I can get a breakdown in here that nothing has been done on it as well. Okay, so that's me looking at it as a learner. If we just recap on how you would do that as a tutor. I'll go into that listening and speaking course, go to course admin, class progress and then click on that learner and grades. Okay, and then I can see here that same view that the learner saw. If I click on content, then I can see again that lesson three hasn't been attempted. So that's how you can view progress within a course. If I wanted to look at another course, I'd go to the home button. I might click on another area like level three and maths. And again, do the same thing. So I'd go to course admin, class progress, And I'll get a list of all the learners then that are uh, ro enrolled in that course and how much they've done. So also how many times they've logged in, content visited. And if I hover over these little bars here, I can see the questions appearing. So a blue bar means it's passed. Orange means it needs to be redone. 
and red means that it's been failed by a lot. So you can see there's a different score there of 67.6 or 50%. So for this learner, for example, I would click in. I'd look at grades. And all the questions in an end test will appear here. Below that, under other items, will be all the tasks. Now, maths at level three has 21 learning outcomes. So it's the longest course that we have. So I would look down through this and see what's happening for this learner. So I can see that task eight is go to lesson. Task 18 is go to lesson and 21 is go to lesson. So at a minimum, I need to make sure that this learner has at least done those three lessons. To check that, I'd go to content. And then in here, because maths has so many lessons, we've broken it into sections. So I can see that lesson eight has been done. I can see that lesson 18 has been done. And if I wanted to drill down into how long the learner has spent on each of the topics, I can click on the arrow there and see how long they spent in it. So in this particular case, maybe the learner is spending a very long time on a page or very, very short time. So you can get an idea of how long they're spending on it in, in seconds. And then lesson 21 was the other one. And they've done that. So it means that the end tests should have appeared. And I can see here that there's one, two, three, four, five end tests, which is what we have in maths. It is a very long course. And they've all been conditionally released. But yet the learner is still unsuccessful overall. OK, so that's their status. So what I can do here is I can go to course admin and look at the grades. Because it's a long course, there's a lot to keep track of. So I can scroll across for this learner and I can see all the tasks. Remember, if the learner did fail a task, it stays as go to lesson. Even if they've gone to the lesson, it just stays as that. And if I scroll across to the questions, so there's going to be 42 of these. So we have two questions at level three for every learning outcome. I can see which ones they might have failed. So for example, question four, two is a redo. Question five, two is a redo in measurement. And two, one in data is a redo. Okay, all the other work seems to be okay. There's also portfolio work in this course that needs to be done. So I'd be advising this learner to go and redo those three questions. And if I'm the learner then, so I'll log out and show you that learner view. So I'm going to go to maths, I'm going to go to content, and I'm going to go straight into that end test. So there was two under measurement of capacity and one under data that I needed to redo. And it was question two, one. So the tick there means that the page has been at least visited, but we know that the grade was wrong. Okay, and I, again, I can just check that again myself by going to my progress and grades and just check and see what is a redo. So it's 2.1, so I'll go in. And I can go straight into that question. I don't have to do all the questions again, but the important thing this time is that I retake the content so that if I get the questions right, my grade will change. 
So I'm going to try and answer these correctly. Okay, and I got it right. So now, if I go back to content and my progress and grades, I should see that question 21. Let me refresh that. Should update. because I did get it right. Now if I just check it as a tutor from the same view. And go into maths and course admin and grades for that learner and scroll across hmm. it should have changed okay so that's something that has gone wrong there and if you do experience that do let us know um that shouldn't have happened there so apologies for that the grade should update and then the learner in this case would need to do portfolio work, which you can see as a tutor what they need to do by clicking onto content and clicking down into the course. So you can see, for example, that there's three pieces of work that need to be done at maths level three. As a tutor, you can dip in and out of the content wherever you like. So you can click onto a lesson and click into the content in a lesson. So if you don't want to use this for QQI certification, maybe you're doing something in al algebra, you can use the questions in that way. Um, the end test will never appear for you as a tutor because it is an assessment, so that doesn't appear, but you can see the type of questions that would appear as tasks. Okay, so maths is 21 altogether. Bear in mind that behind each task, there's three possible questions. So we pool from uh, three and we do the same on the end test as well. So 42 questions would appear in the maths end test and there'd be three questions behind everything that you see on the screen. So just some final points. I would recommend to familiarize yourself with the content. So go in to your tutor account, click on a course and go through the blocks and just see what's in there, particularly courses that need portfolio work. So um, at level two, it's just the courses writing and listening and speaking, whereas at level three, most of the courses have portfolio work. So I would recommend that. There's also a link to a webinar that we've previously done that will list um, all the portfolio work needs. Um, and it's also in your tutor guide. Um, that's part of the handout for this session as well. So I'd recommend that. And that the portfolio work should only be completed after the end tests have been successfully completed. So if you have any queries over your end tests and there's something strange happening for your learner or for your own account, do contact us. Uh, I'm going to put my, my details up here as well. The other thing to note is that the tutor guide is being updated all the time. So when you come into us with questions, we will update in particular the FAQ section, which is page 23. And that tutor guide is available from the help button. So I'll show you where that is. And as a tutor, you can also avail of tutor CPD by going to courses.nala.ie and clicking on tutor courses. So I'll show you how to do those two things. There's the emails there 
Um, as I say, this is being recorded, so after the recording today, uh, we'll put it up on the website and I'll also send out the link to the recording and to uh, the slides to you as well. So just some of those things that I mentioned, if I am logged in as a tutor and I go to courses.nala.ie under tutor courses, I can see courses that are available to me. So you can click on register now and sign up for those courses yourself. So they're all free. If I am logged in as a tutor on the home page, there's a help button. And in here, there are tutor resources. So there's a link there that you can click on. And the tutor guide that I've given today as a handout is there. Um, and there's also a Learn with NALA course that we're working on um, that should be able to help your learners in navigating the platform. Okay. Um, and then the last thing that I mentioned was about if you need to update learner details at any stage, when you go to courses.nala.ie, and my account and put in the details of an existing user. So we'll say one of my test accounts and then review my profile. Then you can update details in there. Okay. So that was a run through the platform. I'll go through any questions that you have now. Um, and if you want to put up your hand, we'll do that so we can unmute you so you can ask your question. Um, if there's any questions in the chat box, I'm going to go through those now. So feel free to put up your hand if you wish. And I'll go through any questions that you have. Okay, so there was one question that come in about recording the session. So yes, I will do that. Um, and it should be available probably by tomorrow. So um, anyone who's registered will get the recording plus the slides from today. Um, as I say, if you want to think about any questions you have, feel free to put up your hands. Just maybe while you're thinking about that, I have a poll here, which I'm just going to launch. Um, so if you want to maybe answer these questions. So the first poll is about maybe the greatest barriers that you might have to learning at the moment. So for example, is it um, lack of time to set up learners or lack of resources? or other priorities. Okay, so the answer that's mostly coming in is other priorities for learners and staff at the moment due to COVID. If there's anything you want to comment on that, that particularly we can help with in NALA, um, please do let us know and um, you know, feel free to put that into the chat or question box. Okay, thank you for your response on that. Um, there's another poll here about the best way that we can help you in NALA. So is it, for example, to have more webinars, dedicated Q&A time, free phone support? Is it more resources like videos, guides and handouts? Or is it something else? And feel free to type that into uh, the chat box. Okay, so the answer that mostly seems to be coming in is more resources, so videos, guides and handouts. And again, if you have any suggestions for that, do email us or feel free to type it into the, the chat box. Okay, so thanks for your input on that. And then the last poll is about what areas you and your learners are interested in. 
So is it QQI level two? Is it QQI level three? Is it QQI level one? Is it QQI level four and above? Or is it non-QQI? Uh, so for example, if there's a particular area that you're interested in. Okay, so I'm just looking at the answers as they're coming in there. So it seems to be close between level three and level four and above. We do have content from the old platform um, on level four that we will be moving across to this new platform. So that will be coming, um, but we're, we're still working on level one, two and three at the moment. So it may be the end of this year or next year before we get that level four content up. We had three courses, maths, um, digital media and communications. So just to be aware that that will be coming, but it is going to take a little while. Okay, so that's really, I suppose, the end of the polling session. Um, as I say, if you have any feedback, feel free to type it into the questions or chat box. Or if you want to uh, put up your hand, feel free to do so as well. And if there's no questions coming in, we will wrap it up there. Okay, I just see.